Wilde's Family Packs are one heck of a good deal for a complete barbecue meal loaded with all the smoked meats, tasty sides, buns, and sauces you need to feed your family. Order online at GoHogWild.com. Hog Wild Pit Barbecue, 3210 Cornhusker Highway in Lincoln. But don't be late, we close at 8. Whether you're looking for a place to stay for a concert at PBA, a Nebraska home game, or just a night on the town, the Courtyard Lincoln Downtown Haymarket is the place for you. Enjoy an evening at one of many restaurants or bars within a short walking distance. Business travelers at the hotel will enjoy free high-speed internet access, a 24-hour business center, and large in-room workstations. And check out the Bistro, where you'll enjoy healthier food and beverage options, as well as high-tech conveniences. Book your room today at the Courtyard Lincoln Downtown Haymarket. This is James Harrell with NP Dodge Real Estate. When I became a licensed realtor, I wanted a brokerage that would help me grow in my new career. I found that in Lincoln First Realty. When Lincoln First was acquired by NP Dodge, the training and support I received only got better. I love knowing I have the power of the NP Dodge brand behind me. I would recommend NP Dodge to new agents looking to jumpstart their real estate career and to current agents who want to take their business to the next level. Expand your career with NP Dodge. Call Eric at 402-434-2222. Grab a free burger and beer at LA Power Sports of Lincoln on April 27th during your Husker Spring Game tailgate. Meet the LA Power Sports team, play some tailgate games with them, and enter for a chance to win an official John Elway autographed football. Check out their huge selection of boats and watercraft for the summer, along with hundreds of motorcycles, ATVs, and side-by-sides from all the major brands. Stop out and watch the game with them on April 27th. LA Power Sports of Lincoln, 27th and I-80. They'll be tailgating all day. At Fairway Meat Market, your family, and as part of the family, they want to save you money on your meat and groceries. Now, through April 7th, enjoy USDA Choice 8-ounce New York Strips for $6.99 each, hickory smoked bacon for $4.99 per pound, fresh boneless skinless chicken breast for $2.99 per pound, and whole tri-tip for $9.99 per pound. That's all at Fairway Meat Market in the Rockledge Square Shopping Center, just south of 84th and Van Dorn. Rico here with HIS Auto Care at 70th and Van Dorn, letting you know HIS is a great place to bring your vehicle for service. With superior service, bumper to bumper, we'll treat your vehicle like it's your mother's. Doesn't get any better than that. So call 402-488-8934 and HIS Auto will make you glad you did. 5% off, mention this ad, and for sure your mother will be proud you called. 402-488-8934, HIS Auto Care, 70th and Van Dorn. God bless you. Spring is here. It's time to get back outside and into proper shoes this year. Brown Shoe Fit is the place to buy this spring with their sale on athletic shoes. Get $15 off any regular price athletic shoes with respected brands like Hoka, Brooks, New Balance, and On Running. And don't forget, Brown's carries a large arrangement of sizes and widths to fit your feet properly. Start your spring off right at Brown Shoe Fit, just south of 66 and Q in Lincoln. Empower a child today with the Teammates Mentoring Program. Hope is only a conversation away when you choose to share your talent, time, and heart with a child. Together, you can build a relationship based on strengths and chart a brighter future one week at a time. Find out how you can be a mentor by visiting LincolnTeammates.org. Become what you needed as a kid by joining the Teammates Mentoring Program today. Constructors is now hiring for all positions, with laborers starting at $23 and up based on experience. Constructors has immediate job openings for laborers, mechanics, bridge builders, operators, and drivers. Start your new career today. Constructors offers great pay, health, dental, and vision insurance, paid time off, paid holidays, and so much more. Join the crew today and be a part of Nebraska's oldest paving company dating back to 1908. For a complete list of openings and to apply online, visit ConstructorsLincoln.com. John Henry's has a brand new membership club to protect your entire home in one program. With a VIP and a deluxe option, we will help you find the plan that best fits your needs. Receive discounts on services and equipment, priority service, complimentary inspections, and so much more. Protect your home's plumbing, heating, cooling, and electrical systems all in one membership. Call John Henry's to learn more. 435-5555, John Henry's Plumbing, heating and air. Welcome in. This is the happy hour, 93.7 The Ticket, theticketfm.com. If you are listening to us, you have found your way to the Sarder Heyman Jewelers live video stream. 
on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, or Allo Channel 961. Those are all places for you guys to check us out there. If you are on the stream going, why are they saying that I can only hear them on the stream? Well, it's because the Kansas City Royals are supposed to play a game today. Mm -hmm. Currently in a weather delay out east in Baltimore. Got a series to take today, boys. Kansas City's gotten the uh, gotten on the right track here. Mm -hmm. they, they've won a couple in a row. Mm -hmm. So have the Cubs. The Cubs are winners of three in a row. Three and two this season. Uh, yeah, I guess the Royals didn't go in a row. They lost the first okay. game in Baltimore. The, the bullpen blew it. But. Ah, well, they can go for a series today. They can't. Uh, that voice that you hear is Austin Norman. Nick Sainert, Austin Norman with you. Huge thanks to Empire Fence and Editing for their support of the show. As always, make sure you visit them. Get to Give them a call for any of your uh, outdoor needs, your fencing needs as we approach the summer. Uh, it might be a good idea just to uh, get that fence updated, repaired, just a brand new one as well. The Empire is the place to be. So the Royals are on the FM dial. So once again, if you can hear us, you will be uh, you found your way to the Sarder Heyman Jewelers live video stream. And that's going to be the case for the bulk of the summer, of the bulk of the baseball season, as uh, we love day baseball. Day baseball is one of the most underrated things in sports, I think. Mm. And there's something about having the ability at 12.05 p.m. to turn on a baseball game. And this, this works for, like, casual baseball fans more than anything. Because you can turn on a baseball game and watch a riveting matchup between the Brewers and Twins today, the Royals and Orioles, if you will. And then later this afternoon, it just the games get like increasingly a little bit better mm. where you have some better matchups in the afternoon and evening. But then there's also some days where it's like Cubs and Cardinals on a midday, on, on, excuse me, on a, on, a, on a middle of the day type of, of first pitch or Royals and Twins, or Royals and Cardinals in an I-70 series. Like, day baseball is great. Day baseball is fantastic. I know there's a lot of people out there who, once we really get into golf season, Thursday, Friday, are oh, there yeah. golf on in the background Very days. much so. Um, I'm a day baseball guy. Yeah. I, I absolutely am. I mean, I don't even care who it is. I will fire up my TV provider and just yeah. throw that game on in the background. I don't have to track it that much. Just have it there. And then when it's days like today with, the Royals, you know, I'll, I'll have the, the game cast up. Wish I could be listening to to Jake on the call, but obviously got a show to do. So that, mm -hmm. that that business comes first. But there's just something so this is this is what it's supposed to be. The skies are blue, at least here, yes. you know, in Lincoln. It's yeah, it's a little chilly, a little windy. I, I've never been the kid to get taken out of school to go to a game, which is something I hope to do with my kid someday. Yeah. Like I, I will just take off day off of work and, you know, Say hey, baseball. opening day or second second game of the year. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll get I'll get Beckett out of school and say we're going to a game. It's you're supposed to have a day off like this for baseball. It's See, perfect. I gotta have a son first before I got I do that. Um, I take my daughter too, but yeah, yeah I, I have was, a son right that's, now. That's so. true. Yes, yes, son or daughter. Uh, whether it's Husker softball too, Husker true. softball on a, on a roll. By the mm. way, um, I, I was just looking at this this article from the from ESPN, and I don't I don't honor a lot of like ESPN major league baseball articles for the most part. Yes. Jeff Passan is Passan, part of it. McDaniel. And that's about it. Yeah. But I was, I was looking at this one and it's, it's titled the major league baseball 2024 watchability index ranking the most fun teams to watch. Any guesses? Who's number one uh, Dodgers or Braves. It, it would be the Dodgers. Okay. Number two is the Baltimore Orioles. Ooh. Um, they mentioned Gunnar Henderson, Corbin Burns, Kyle Bradish, um, Adley Rutschman as well as he carves in his, his role. And they say also just having Jackson Holiday in your in your farm system mm -hmm. provides some excitement there. Number three is Atlanta. Arizona comes in at number four. Really? Texas is at five. And the Cubs are at six. Um, they, they mentioned Dansby, Nico Horner. Uh, Justin Steele, and then also they got bonus points for stealing Craig Council from an inner division rival. Um, any any ideas out of the thirty teams where the Kansas City Royals fall in the twenty twenty four watchability index? Okay, so the fun includes Bobby Witt Jr., Cole Reagans, that is and, right, and maybe like the Salvi Smile, Salvi that Splash. Is true. In that there. is true. That is correct. Okay. Have you read this article? I have not. Okay, I'm just trying to trying to think about this big picture. I'll, I'll tell you the two teams they're wedged in between. Ooh. 
Okay. The Seattle Mariners are mm-hmm. one spot ahead with pitching in, in J Rod. Yes. Okay. George George Kirby, Kirby and Julie, Gilbert, Julia or Julio Castillo. Rodriguez. Mm-hmm. Um, and then St. Louis is one spot below them with uh, Marvel getting a two year extension. They say Arenado, Goldschmidt, Walker, Tommy Edmond, Lars Newbar. So the Royals are wedged in between the Mariners and the Cardinals. Is that 11, 12, 13? It is not. Much lower. 19, 20, and 21. Wow. The Royals, the 20th most exciting team, huh. according to ESPN. Uh, that uh, Disrespectful. The, uh, the order here past the Cubs. The Phillies, somehow, some way, the Red Sox come in at eighth. No shot. No shot. There is, that the, is a... Oh. A I'm fake, not a fake mm, article. Mm, yep. Fake, fake article. This, oh my gosh. New York Mets coming at nine. Those are dumpster fires. The 10th most exciting team, the Pittsburgh Pirates. Uh, they have O'Neill Cruz, Andrew McCutcheon, <laughs> Key, Key Brian Hayes. I post, love Andrew McCutcheon, but he is Andrew, not Andrew a reason to tune in and watch the Pirates. Key Brian Hayes. Sure. O'Neill Cruz. Absolutely. We're still throwing Andrew McCutcheon on this list. Well, they re-signed him, and it's it's that whole like nostalgic thing. Um, how about this? It, this is the this is. Did the they write-up. say Mitch Keller? They do. Okay, thank you. Um, this is the write-up that they have on the Pittsburgh Pirates today. This is not an overreaction to Pittsburgh's hot hot start. Nope. This is a scientific survey. They say in all caps. I don't know if the Pirates are going to be good, but they're going to be more fun than they've been in the past. The return of O'Neill Cruz is a huge part of that, of course, but they've added an excellent fly ball chaser in center fielder and former Kansas City Royal Michael A. Taylor. He's there. While while Jones' debut start with 10 strikeouts and the pending arrival of Paul Skeens. There it is. Paul Skeens and his 100-mile-per-hour heater helps the youth score, mix in a great ballpark, classic jerseys, and the Roberto Clemente bridge behind center field I'll be watching more Pirates games than I have in years. <laughs> okay. I do love PNC. I mean, PNC is a great view. It is. I'm not, I can't Can debate that. The, that. the hedge in center field that Can, says Pirates. Yeah. Can we talk it's about how great, great the stadium looks? It's incredible. Mm-hmm. Too bad it's in Pittsburgh. but I'm not sure people realize that. The yellow bridge in the background. Of how good that stadium looks. On the river. Yeah, yeah, it it's beautiful. Mm-hmm. It's a beautiful ballpark. Mm-hmm. I most, uh, how should I say this? What is the one ballpark that you want to visit most, and why? Uh, the Royals downtown stadium. <laughs> That's not happening. <laughs> no, we'll know, get to that. Um, uh, PNC is definitely up there. I haven't been inside Wrigley, but I've been to it. Okay, Camden. I've heard good things about. Um, which feels so weird. Yeah. That because because standing there, it's like it doesn't have that great of a view. Okay, how about this? What if I say Oracle Park? I, I want to see the cove. I want to see I, the bay. I'm okay with that. Um, I, I know it's tough on on right-handed hitters like to go the opposite way, yeah. and the lefties have a t- hard time getting the ball over that wall. But it's a unique enough mm-hmm. one situated right there on the water. I obviously have no fondness in my heart for the Giants based off of 2014 yeah. and since then. But I feel like Oracle Park is really an underrated one that won't come to mind for a lot of people. And I just I just love where it's situated. Like the easy answer for me and 402-464-5685. If you are on the stream, we can st- we still have the text line. You can comment on the stream that you are currently watching on, uh, whether unless you're watching on Alloc, then you can't comment on the TV. But uh, text us 402-464-5685. The Honda of Lincoln hotline and the Sarder Heyman text line. Uh, are both open for you guys. Uh, what what ballpark are is kind of on your list uh, of dream ballpark to visit? I think the easy answer as a Cubs fan would be Wrigley, right? And and, and stuff. Um, and there's there's a trip in the very near future, potentially this summer, mm. uh, for for a trip to Wrigley. You didn't propose there? No, no, no. <laughs> Kyla would kill me. She would. <laughs> she would. If I if I if I sidebar, <laughs> she would not probably say yes okay that's a lie she would say yes she would not be happy if i proposed at like a ballpark if i proposed on her birthday which is today happy birthday Mm -hmm. to kyla my girlfriend um which is like like those it needs to be on like a random day gotcha like july 13th i am very anti-ballpark proposal 
You better watch it because Rico proposed to Rachel at Memorial Stadium. During a game? I believe it was pregame. Pre-game of a Nebraska Minnesota matchup. Mm. It may have been it may have been okay, so, if I so, so that's slightly different. If it's if the field's empty and like it holds a special yep. place for you, fine. If it's pregame, fine. But the, the proposal cam, well, and, not a fan of that. No, not a fan of the proposal cam. And I think there's it's also different if you play for a team that's playing there. Like I was in the building with Mike Peltz. Ah, yeah. Mike Peltz proposed <laughs> to his girlfriend after right. after Ian Nebraska Johnson basketball. and Boise State. Yes. Um, there was the uh there was the one with was it Penn State or Ohio State? No, no, there was an Indiana basketball player. Yes, yeah, Indiana yeah, yeah. basketball player that proposed. I, I have, I have no issues with that. You're, you're, go ahead, whatever. Mm-hmm. Like athletics is a big part of you. She might be a cheerleader. Go ahead, you're good. Right. Um, you both spent a lot of time there. I, I won't do that. No. Also, Kyla's just not a big like center of attention person. Mm. She would hate it if people Fair are enough. if if a ton of people are watching. Um. Okay, so we got we got a couple comments for uh, dreams uh, stadiums that they want to visit. Will Will on the on the YouTube stream says old Rosenblatt. I mean, yeah, I, I suppose so. Um, yeah. But major league stadium wise, like obviously Wrigley's going to be up there. PNC for some reason is high on the list. Bush would be interesting. Bush Stadium for uh, St. Louis just because mm-hmm. the arch behind it. Yeah, I think I'm a big skyline guy. Um, is like, how does it look past the center field wall? Which is why Haymarket is one of my favorite is because it's got such a great view with the bridge. Seeing Memorial Stadium and the bridge. And And, and that was such a big thing with PBA too, was because it was like, man, when you're watching a game, it's going to have this not big city feel, but it's going to be like, yeah, downtown is right there. Mm -hmm. Um, So I think think that skylines are a big, there's this ballpark in Charlotte, a tri- it's like a minor league ballpark mm. in downtown Charlotte. It's where they play the ACC tournament. Oh, one of yeah. the one of the best skylines past mm. center field's wall um, that I I can remember. But nonetheless, I I, I don't know. I, I'd be interested to see and hear some of the the ballparks because like yeah, like uh, there's a day where I hope to get you know to like Tropicana Field for the Tampa Bay Rays. I had a chance to go uh, on my way down on a road trip to Florida. And we decided to skip it just because yeah. it was a bad matchup and like in the middle of a weekday and we would have been one of like 40 people there. Yeah. So um, nonetheless, once again, 402-464-5685. The Honda Lincoln Hotline and the Starter Heyman text line are open for you guys the entire show today. Once again, with the Royals any update on the re- on the weather delay yet? Uh, no, I've been okay. scrolling. I did I did text uh, an inside source who said no idea <laughs> no when idea. the rain's going to clear or what the somebody, schedule is. Somebody so. out in in Baltimore yes. potentially. Mm-hmm. So, because uh, thankfully they don't call games <laughs> from a remote location anymore. Uh, all right, let's let's take a break. When we come back, we're going to dive into a little Husker conversation with Steve Mark of Inside Nebraska. Steve is going to join us uh, over the phone. As we break down, all right, transfer portal stuff going on with Nebraska basketball. Um, you had Nebraska football. We've seen a, 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 one of their practices. We've heard, heard and talked to a couple of coaches and coordinators. And we'll even ask Steve, who is a resident Cubs fan himself, can the Cubs win the NL Central and why? We'll talk about that coming up next with Steve Mark of Inside Nebraska. So don't go anywhere. We'll come back in just a few short moments on the happy hour here on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Have you been accused of a crime? Is your freedom at stake? At Liberty Law Group, we are committed to the defense of liberty for those accused. Facing the court is stressful, overwhelming, and full of uncertainty. At Liberty Law Group, we believe in treating every person with respect, compassion, and understanding. When legal troubles are keeping you up, trust Liberty Law Group to fight your battles. To learn more, call 877-42-LIBERTY. That's 877-42-LIBERTY. The Lincoln Marathon hits the streets Sunday, May 5th. Will you be part of the pack? Registration is now open for the full and half marathon at the LincolnMarathon.org. This event offers something for runners of all ages and abilities, from elite athletes to those looking to accomplish a fitness goal or check off a bucket list item. Sign up now to run the marathon on Sunday, May 5th. If running isn't in the cards, consider volunteering on race day. Complete event details can be found at LincolnMarathon.org. 
Rashawn Jackson here for Bauer Infrastructure, a veteran-owned local company proudly serving Lincoln, Lancaster County, and the surrounding areas. Bauer provides quality work at an affordable price, and they're growing rapidly. If you want to experience a career with a fast-paced, family-friendly environment, visit BauerInfrastructure.com. They have top-of-the-line benefits, year-round work, even through the winter. Bauer, usher in the new era of infrastructure to an area near you. And as always, go Big Red! Community means something different to everyone. But for me, it means cheering on those around you during the good times and helping them out during the tough times. I'm softball player Jordy Ball, and I've been blessed with the support of my friends, family, coaches, and community throughout my life. When looking for a bank to call home, it was easy to choose Midwest Bank. I never feel like just another customer, and they're proud to support their communities. They love what they do, and it shows. Your community, your bank, Midwest Bank. Iron High Construction is higher. They're looking for hardworking, self-motivated individuals who are team players. Iron High Construction has openings for an experienced project manager, estimator, apprentice, skilled laborer, and a rector or installer. They will train the right people and make sure you understand the position and requirements. At Iron High Construction, it's own it, be honest, and do it right. Apply today and learn more about their other benefits at ironhideconstruction.com, where they're committed to you every step of the way. Sand Hills Global is hiring. With their fast-paced, growing culture, they have hundreds of new openings in sales, marketing, traveling support, software development, web design, and more. Full-time roles offer a four-and-a-half-day work week, along with flexible internships in most areas. Career and internship opportunities are available at our global headquarters in Lincoln, Nebraska. Find your fit today at www.sandhills.jobs. Take your internet service to new levels with Allo, your award-winning internet provider across our fiber hoods. Allo isn't just about the fastest internet available. It's about connecting you to your world, work, and play seamlessly. Our award-winning service ensures affordable, secure, and reliable connectivity, setting us apart. Ready to transform your internet experience? Experience the fiber difference today. Sign up now at allofiber.com. Allo. Your sprinklers are watering the street or flooding your backyard. If you're on a list that doesn't exist, it's time for Judson Irrigation. At Judson Irrigation, Lee or Lacey or Judson will make an appointment. You pick the time and they'll be there to fix your sprinkler system. Now that's service, a dying art these days. Keep summer green. Call Judson Irrigation, 402-420-6277 or judsonirrigation.com. Your business runs like a well-oiled machine. It's important that your actual machines do too. Stern is here to make sure you don't have to worry about that. They provide solutions for heavy equipment and automotive fuels, lubricants, and equipment guard options. And with Stern's commitment to customer service for the past 40 years, you know you have a partner to help support your operations for years to come. Contact Roger at Stern Company by calling 1-800-477-2744 or visit them online at stern.co. Stern Company, where problems meet solvers. My dream was to work in commercial banking, but it required a college degree and I didn't have one. I found out that Doan had classes for adult learners on the Lincoln campus and online. So I earned my bachelor's degree and five months later, I landed my dream job. I decided to continue my education and now I'm working on my MBA at Doan. For me, the Doan experience has been life-changing. Road construction is complete, so there's nothing keeping you from getting into Mullen Motors. They can get you into a new vehicle right now and get your 2024 started off the right way. They cleared off their 2023 inventory and have tons of new vehicles to choose from to make sure you get to where you need to be this year. Out with the old and in with the new. Stop by Mullen Motors today, just north of 48th and Layton in Lincoln. No tag on, just quality vehicles. Mullen Motors. Welcome back into the happy hour, 93.7 The Ticket, theticketfm.com. Once again, if you are checking us out on the Starter Heyman Jewelers live video stream, appreciate you guys as 
the Kansas City Royals are currently in a weather delay on the FM dial. But that's okay because we can still have guests and we can still have uh, folks joining us on the Allo VIP line. VIP line brought to you by Allo Fiber, where they understand the importance of exceptional service with a local heart. And today we are joined by our good friend, Steve Mark of Inside Nebraska. Steve, happy uh, baseball season. Happy opening week, I suppose. Um, why can the Cubs win the NL Central? Because you bet on them. Uh, come on. We don't, we don't need to talk about this. All right. I went, I, I may have. I, <laughs> I, I I may have made a trip to to the good old warhorse partner of the station, friend of the station, friend of the program, and uh, spread a little sugar. But yes, why else can the NL the NL Central champions be the Chicago Cubs? Well, I don't know, Nick. I I, I am um, I'm I'm just wondering about this team. You know, I I, I like it. I like the core that that they got back: Dancy Swanson, yes. Belly. Uh, Ian Happ, Christopher Morrell smashing home runs already. Yes. Saya is back. Um, you know what? The the pitching I'm I'm gonna kind of worry about here, but you nah. know it's it's you know it's it's the Cubs, so we're gonna be worrying <laughs> about a lot all season long. Well, they got they got uh, that Sh- uh, Shoto Iman- Imanaga guy from Japan as well. So yeah, yeah, I uh, I'm I'm still working on pronouncing that name, but <laughs> I, I do like him. I liked what I saw the other day from him. What was it? Nine nine strikeouts or something yes. like that. I'm I'm excited for him. So. Uh, you know, we're, we're going to get the the sweep over the Rockies here today and then, right. and then move on with this season. So I'm, I'm excited. They, I was, uh, me and Austin were breaking down. Um, Cause oh, we had, we got Austin Norman in for Rico today. Rico's traveling back from San Diego. I'm not sure if you saw that on Twitter. Rico's like an international traveler now. Yeah. Yeah, I, I did. I was following along. <laughs> that was probably a nice little trip to the West coast for old Rico. So um, I'm, I'm, I hope he had a lot of fun out there. That's, it looked like he did. That's right. So anyway, I was talking to Austin in the first segment about uh, ESPN came out with this like watchability index uh, ranking the most fun teams to watch in Major League Baseball this year. And the Cubs come in as the sixth most exciting team to watch this year in, in Major League Baseball. Sixth, huh? Yeah. That's- that's pretty good. I, I would I, say I think so. That's pretty good, and a lot of it has to be Christopher Morrell, right? Just well, smashing bombs left and right over there. Yeah, and and they, they, you know they're exper- they're experimenting him in in the in the corner on the hot corner um, at third base. I, they they mention that part of this, what makes it fun to watch, is going to be the rivalry with the Brewers uh, after yeah. stealing Craig Council. Yeah, yeah, that's obviously a big one too. Um, you know, nobody really likes the Brewers. I don't really like <laughs> Milwaukee, so you know, it's, I, I definitely understand that. I'm, I'm uh, glad Coach Council came yes. over to the good side, and and he can start working on that rivalry now. Manager Council, our hero. All right, Steve, <laughs> let's uh, let's talk Huskers um, because maybe some some fans' heroes have departed the program. Nebraska basketball, uh, seemingly, it feels like loses a transfer every day. You and I were having conversations. Uh, via text a couple of days ago about this and and you mentioned like it's not time to hit the panic button and I think I replied with like yeah I don't I don't know what direction they're gonna go though because it feels like they're, they're, like Nebraska staff has a lot of work to do here what's your take now that after you know Matar has now entered the portal and and with all the names that we already knew what's what's kind of your take on everything that's gone on throughout Nebraska's offseason yeah and I don't want to diminish you know if if fans are kind of worried right now, because I totally understand that. I mean, yeah. six guys entering the port. I mean, that's the the, the number six kind of like make, make you raise your eyebrow and and uh, turn your head sharply and and kind of ask, you know, hey, what's going on over there? Uh, so I totally understand that. But you know, when you when you start looking and, and digging into things and start looking at the players and the names who did enter the portal. I'm fairly confident that everything is comp- is fine over there at Nebraska. The, the names that the names that entered, so you know, you had your Ramel Lloyd, Blaze Kata, um, C.J. Wilcher, Jamarcus Lawrence, Matar Jope. Um, you know, those guys and Eli Rice, of course. You know, two of them I I, I think are stings to the program and and not huge stings with C.J. Wilcher and Jamarcus Lawrence because um you know we we both know what they brought to the program cj wilcher has been here for three seasons he meant a lot to, to the program on the court as a three-point shooter and off the court with his leadership leadership skills which um w- kind of grew over time which was nice to see and then jamarcus lawrence he was kind of put in the a tough spot you know never never uh playing primarily never being the primary ball handler uh, in his basketball life until this season and it was kind of a rocky transition 
Um, but, you know, both those guys at the end of the day were bench pieces. They were coming off the bench uh, at the end of the season. Nebraska had their rotation, their starting, their starting core, who, by the way, is still intact. You know, Bryce Williams still here, Rink Mast uh, still there, Juwan Gary still there. And then everybody's just kind of um, forgetting, I think, about Aaron Ulis. And, no, I understand Aaron Ulis hasn't played at all this season because he couldn't um, with the Iowa gambling scandal. But, yeah. he, you know, if he sticks around in Lincoln, that's your starting point guard. You're likely starting point guard next season. Um, so, you know, you're, you're absolutely right, Nick. Uh, Nebraska's coaching staff does have work to do to fill out the pieces surrounding that core. Now, if that core stays intact, which, which I think it might do, um, you know, I, 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 I like this team. I still like the team, what they have coming back. But obviously, um, roster spots need to be filled and, uh, there are plenty of options in the transfer portal right now. And then along, along with, uh, kind of the Aaron Ulis lines, um, is Mick Janowski, uh, yeah. the, the three-star guard, uh, six foot three, six four guard at a, uh, Pewaukee, Wisconsin. You know, that guy is a lights out shooter, almost 38%. And he took over 233s, um, this past season as a senior at Pewaukee. Um, he has some fire to him, a little bit of Kese Tominaga fire to him. Not as much as Kese, but not a lot of people do. Um, and yeah, he's just a knockdown shooter. And I don't think it's a stretch to think that uh, Nick Janowski can enter the program as a true freshman and find a role off the bench, a scoring role that would help kind of lessen that sting of CJ Walter and Jamarcus Lawrence, um, who are going to come off the, who are, in my opinion, fringe starters uh, for Nebraska and, and wound up coming off the bench. So, you're absolutely right, Nick. You know, they, they have work to do. Um, but I think, you know, from everything that Fred Hoiberg has told us during the season, he really likes the formula that he's found um, with trying to search for guys in the portal. I think he has a good eye for it the past two seasons. He's brought in a lot of good guys who have done some good things on the court and off the court. You know, I, I think, you know, there's a good chance that that continues. Um, but, you know, <laughs> obviously they need to get cracking right now. And there's some um, in home, in home visits, uh, being reported by the staff. So they're, so they're working on it, but you're absolutely right. Uh, they're going to get, they're going to need to fill out, um, the pieces around that core and, and definitely make sure that core actually stays. We're, we're, we're speaking to Steve Mark of Inside Nebraska, and there's a, there's a lot in what you just gave us, and we appreciate that. First off, with Aaron Ulis, um, because th- that's a guy that obviously didn't play at all this season. And, and we've had conversations here. I've been kind of, uh, louder than a lot of other people of like, all right, Nebraska's now got to replenish and replace or fill the hole of of guys they've lost and then figure out a way to elevate and, and continue to improve off of this last season, right? Where, because you don't want to just be stuck in the mud. You made a long-term commitment now to Fred Hoiberg. You extended your your commitment. You're paying him really well to coach at a at a notoriously unsuccessful basketball program. And I look at this as like, not a slight to Aaron Ulis, but we knew the situation last year when they went out and got Aaron Ulis. And it was after they missed on a couple of other guys. His stats don't really jump off the page at Iowa. Are you really feeling confident in, in his ability to lead the basketball program at that point guard position, knowing everything we know now and, and in a pretty crucial year where it's like, okay, Coach Hoiberg, let's continue to raise that expectation. I totally get where you're coming from. And right now, like me personally, no, I'm not, but, Mm -hmm. but I haven't been, you know, at the practices watching him with the scout team, run the scout team and and give the first team guys uh, a good look. And somebody who has done that, Fred Hoiberg and Fred Hoiberg, the entire season has been, you know, whenever Aaron Euless got brought up, he was so highly, highly complimentary of, of Aaron, of Aaron Euless and how good of a teammate he's been and how well um, he's handled that whole situation where he was unable to play. Um, but you know, while he didn't play in games, he was, he was getting the work in at practice. And, and I know, uh, practice reps are not the same as game reps and it's just a different environment and everything. I, I totally get that. Um, but right now I think the program is, is comfortable, um, heading into the off season with Aaron, mm-hmm. with the potential of Aaron Euless kind of being that main ball handler for Hoybert's kind of NBA style five out, um, you know, read and react offense that that kind of worked so well at times this season. So I totally understand where you're coming from. The the numbers don't jump off the page, but what you like about Aaron Euless, I think he's a pretty tough guard. He has 27 games, um, a big 10 starting experience. He has NCAA tournament experience. He has the experience that you're looking for. Um, so, you know, I, I, 
it's it's an interesting situation for sure. Um, you know, I, I get what you're saying. It's it's kind of um, there's some mystery surrounding that. You know, yeah. heading into the, heading into the season, but you know, at the same time, there's seven scholarships to play with right now, and um, you know, more players, different players from all over the country are entering the transfer portal at a crazy, insane rate. So who knows what's going to happen right now? But um, as of right now, I, I think the the plan right. Now, you know, is, is kind of, I think the program is okay with Aaron Euless kind of heading into the mm-hmm. season as, as that primary ball handler. But of course with everything in life and especially college athletics, things could change um, on a day-to-day basis. I, I think also point of it is that they stuck with him. They kept mm-hmm. him on the roster and in, in, in a time where with everything going on off the floor, they, they certainly could have, uh, have cut ties with him. They sure could have. And Steve, you brought up the, the worry a little bit and didn't want to gloss over that. And I think we can all sense it. Do, do you think the, the worry about the portal losses and next year from, from the fan base is because Nebraska you know, just still doesn't trust the head coach, still doesn't trust the program? Or do you think it's just because they're just like anxious and jumpy to get going with you know, hopefully another good season next year? Well, that's a good point. And I think a lot of, I think a lot of it is there was a taste of success. You know, they finally got the, got to the big dance dance after 10 seasons. And, you know, everybody is so starved for wins. The football program hasn't provided it. Um, but now the basketball team did and, you know, everybody wants that, that train to keep rolling. Right. Um, but you know, and I, and I think there is also some truth to it, um, that, you know, that nobody wants this to be a one-time thing, uh, a one-hit wonder type type season where you have all this success um, and then uh, key guys leave and then you know you're left there kind of like that Will Smith gif of you know a fresh fresh Prince of Bel Air where he's uh, looking around in his empty living room and nothing's there. You know, I I, I think that you know Husker fans really want this um, good the good vibes in the basketball court to keep going and you know. I think there is a little bit of legitimacy to, you know, not wanting this to be a one hit wonder type thing. Um, and then you extend the head coach and Fred Horberg he's got this big contract. He's being paid a lot of money. I just don't, I just think that there is some, some um, frightened fans out there that, that think um, maybe, maybe, you know, it's, this isn't going to be a sustained run. Um, but you know, it's, it's so early right now. Um, so many guys are going to come and go. That's going to be the way college football roster building. Uh, college football and basketball roster building is going to be from now on guys are going to come and go it, the the churn is going to be constant. So, you know, I, I, I just think that there's some, you know, not, not a, not a belief that this is going to be a consistent thing, but I think, you know, inside the walls at, at in Nebraska basketball's program, I think that they, they have a plan. And a lot of, a lot of people have kind of asked me on our message board at, inside Nebraska, you know, does, does Fred have a plan? Oh my God. Oh my God. The sky is falling. I don't think the sky, sky is falling, and I think Nebraska's coaching staff has a good plan to kind of you know replace the guys that, that are leaving. So kind of to follow up on that, it sounds like you think Fred Hoiberg and his staff have earned the benefit of the doubt. What would you tell fans? to? What, what is your response to fans that are maybe still a little jumpy and anxious? And why does Fred Hoiberg maybe deserve some more benefit of the doubt from the, the public writ large? Because I think Fred has shown an ability, an ability to adjust from things that haven't worked earlier in his tenure. I think he started to recruiting, he started to recruit different guys from earlier in his tenure, um, guys who who maybe work harder on the defensive end of the court, um, things like that. More culture guys that kind of fit what he that what he kind of has has learned from during his um, first years in the Big Ten. I, I think that you know he's he's found a formula that he that he likes to recruit to now that he's kind of attracted to um, guys that bring it on the defensive end of the court, just as, just as much as the offensive end of the court. So I think, you know, I think he has really kind of, you know, shown an ability to adjust and change his way of thinking. And in my opinion, um, what he did this, this year is so incredibly important and, and impressive that, you know, in, in my opinion, I think that kind of deserves, you know, a little bit of slack for Fred. We're, we're joined by Steve Mark of Inside Nebraska. A couple more, Steve, before we let you go. Let's talk one more basketball question, and it's and it's just a, an open-ended one. Who are they looking at, right? Who are some of the names that that you guys have heard over there at Inside Nebraska that, that Nebraska's targeting um, that we could see in a Husker uniform next season? Well, a ton, a ton of names, um, you know, a ton of contacted names, which is yeah. kind of like the popular thing on, on Twitter, which is uh, fine, I guess, but, you know, <laughs> it, it makes for easy, easy content. Uh, for stories uh, in, in the industry like mine, but 
you know, everybody's going to be contacting these guys. But, you know, the ones that I think have been reported by multiple outlets that have been visited um, by Nebraska, Andrew Morgan, that uh, North Dakota State forward, 6'10", 245 pounds. He started at he started for the Bison the past two seasons. Yeah. He, would, he would provide that, you know, the size, rebounding, toughness that was kind of missing um, with, with the team this past season. And then also uh, Connor Hickman, who was another Bradley guy. Uh, ranked mass sold teammate. Um, you know, he's a, he's an Indiana guy. He's from Indiana. So maybe you watch that one, but you know, he's a six, three, 200 pound uh, guard who uh, was a pretty good shooter. Um, 40% from three point range, 70% from the uh, free throw line this past season. Those are the two names that have kind of picked up the most steam in my opinion. Um, but yeah, there's, there's a ton of guys yeah. um, r- right now, even John Hughley, if you remember him from the oh, last yeah. cycle, <laughs> yeah, for the big guy from Oklahoma, uh, he actually didn't start for the seniors. He came off the bench for them and kind of rotated with another starting center, but um, you know, he's in there too. He's coming off a knee surgery um, also. So I don't know how that factors into things, but um, yeah, the, the main ones right now are, are kind of the, the Andrew Morgan and, and Connor Hickman from North Dakota state and Bradley respectfully. And Nick and I were talking about this yesterday a little bit, Steve. Obviously, Nebraska hasn't arrived. They haven't really accomplished anything. Just making a tournament isn't the end goal. But I think you, you've seen Nebraska build to this. So is Nebraska still in a place where all it can get are you know mid-major guys transferring up consistently? Or is there enough buzz around Nebraska that maybe they could start taking some swings at some high-major guys and maybe improve the athleticism? I think after the season that they had, that's possible. But another kind of important aspect to this whole thing is NIL. And, I, I'm, I'm, you know, sometimes you hear good things about Nebraska basketball's NIL. Sometimes you hear bad things. I don't know what to believe. I don't know what's true or what's not. Um, but, you know, if, if Nebraska is going to be kind of taking those high major guys that are looking for new homes, I think NIL is going to be extremely important, but I just, I just don't have, don't have the knowledge or the, you know, I don't know what's true or not out there about Nebraska back, basketball's NIL. Sometimes you hear good things. Sometimes you hear bad things, but you know, if they're going to take swings at those uh, guys from big time programs uh, looking for new homes, uh, NIL is going to play a factor. All right, Steve, last one before we get you out of here. Um, how much of a head coach does Tony White sound like? Oh my gosh. Uh, <laughs> seems like he seems like he needs to be one right now. He's, he's yeah. well on his way. Yeah, I, I mean the the comment of uh, he said the comment of along the lines. Obviously, like the we want to be the number one defense nationally. Stole some like hearts and everything of Husker fans, but the part of like um, I don't even remember it verbatim. But he followed it up with like this group has proved nothing. Everything's going to be earned this year on the field. It was like all right, yeah, this guy sounds like one that could lead a football program one day. Yeah, he sounds yeah he sounds like he's you know in control of the defense and. Uh, sounds like a guy who, you know, is not going to be phased by any sort of media questions out there yeah. at all. He knows, you know, he knows how to talk in front of the podium, which is, you know, half the battle when you're uh, a, kind of like a power conference coordinator and, and future head coach. Um, all right, Steve, we'll we'll talk to you next week, man. Uh, appreciate the time as always. We'll, we'll definitely probably, I would assume, keep it football centric next week because we'll have another crack at uh, seeing the Huskers, I believe, before then. Uh, but if not, we'll we'll definitely talk more football when we have you back on the show in a week or so. Uh, so we'll talk to you then. Go Cubs, go. Go Cubs, go. Thanks for having me on, guys. There he is, Steve Mark, inside Nebraska. Appreciate his time. As always, really good stuff, interesting stuff. I, I mean, I, I don't want to get too caught up, and I don't want to sound personally from my standpoint like too negative on the whole Aaron Ulyss stuff. Uh, I, I just think like it's it's so interesting because because of the circumstances of they bring in a guy who wasn't highest on their priority list, right? Or highest on their list. Maybe that's the better way to say it. And maybe I do need to look at it the way Steve brought it up of like Fred Hoiberg's been rather high on him despite just practicing this last season. And what I said there in in that conversation was like, well, I guess they could have cut bait if they really didn't feel like there was a future with Aaron Ulyss. They definitely could have. And that's where we will be able to judge this so much more after the season and we see results because yeah. I do think like Steve in that Fred Hoiberg does deserve some benefit of the doubt. The guys that have sat out for a year under Fred Hoiberg have gotten demonstrably better there in multiple go. things. So I'm willing to give him that opportunity with Aaron Ulyss, mm-hmm. but if it doesn't work, it's, oh, I'm just running back into an old relationship. I can fix him. Exactly. And Nebraska isn't good enough to afford a, I can fix him roster spot. So if they think Aaron Ulyss is going to be good enough, 
cool. Can't wait to see it. Hope he takes a step forward for this program. But if he's not, I, I think there can be a lot of people sitting up, you know, on their couches and recliners and what I say. And mm-hmm. we told you he was who he was. Yeah. Uh, all right. And, and you also don't want that tie that ladder when you just signed your co- coach to a contract right. extension. Right. All right. Let's uh, take our final time out. When we come back, we'll be joined by Eric Strickland as we get you guys ready for on the block with Strickland Austin coming up next. Don't go anywhere. We'll wrap up the happy hour coming up next on 93.7 The Ticket. Plains Cover Crop is your one-stop seed shop. Call us now for spring and summer forages, CRP mixes, and fall cover crop blends. We do farm-specific consulting for practical and efficient seed blends to fit your geography and goals. With a very diverse inventory, we will tailor a blend just for you. We're also looking for contract growers, and we buy and sell rye. Find us online at plainscovercrop.com. Timeless agronomy practices paired with modern technology. East Highway 20 and Orchard and across Nebraska. Hello? Hello? Believe it or not, old phones are one of the most common pain points in offices today. Many of these phones are beyond repair because parts aren't available to fix outdated devices. Whether it's a traditional phone system or cloud-based VOIP technology, Hamilton Business Phones can help upgrade your connection. We make it easy to sync your office phone with yourself for seamless call handling, no matter where you work. If your current office phone can't do this, you deserve better. Hire your local experts. Hire Hamilton at hamiltonisbusiness.com. Spring is here and it's time to wake up Judson. Judson Irrigation is eager and ready to get your sprinkler system up and running for the season. Judson's technicians will check for winter damage, adjust your sprinkler heads, and show you how to set your controller for effective sprinkling coverage. The Judson Irrigation team is here for you. Stay safe. Keep summer green. Call Judson Irrigation 402-420-6277 or judsonirrigation.com. Are you looking to get into the electrical construction industry or wanting a new scene? The electrical workers of Local Union 265 are now hiring licensed journeymen and apprentices and are offering great pay and benefits. Call Mike at 402-875-1034 to apply. Start your electrical career today. NEPCO is hiring CDL drivers for ready mixed concrete, Husker concrete, and Beatrice concrete. NEBCO offers great pay, medical and retirement benefits, paid time off, and they pay for CDL training. Apply today and start your new career with a $2,500 hiring bonus. From NEBCO's beginning in 1908, it's the employees that have formed the company's solid foundation. Start your career today. Visit NEBCOinc.com. That's N-E-B-C-O-I-N-C.com. Unearth the secret to long-lasting tires at Treads Central Tire Pros, a league apart in commitment, service, and expertise. This isn't just about rubber meeting the road, but trust, safety, and surety converging in perfect harmony. This is where expectations are exceeded every time. Make your appointment today at Treads Central Tire Pros, just south of Cortland on Highway 77, or visit our website to explore our services. Remember, when it comes to tires, choose Treads Central Tire Pros, because we tread differently. Road construction is complete, so there's nothing keeping you from getting into Mullen Motors. They can get you into a new vehicle right now and get your 2024 started off the right way. They cleared off their 2023 inventory and have tons of new vehicles to choose from to make sure you get to where you need to be this year. Out with the old and in with the new. Stop by Mullen Motors today, just north of 48th and Layton in Lincoln. No tagline, just quality vehicles. Mullen Motors. Sick of being upsold at gyms? My guy, you're currently a base member? For $90 more, I can upgrade you to our Shred membership. For $130 more, you'll be a Swole member. And for just $300 more, you'll reach Sweat Platinum. At Planet Fitness, you'll get energy without the upsell. Never pushy, always free fitness training and equipment for every workout. It's fitness that fits your budget. Join Planet Fitness for just $1 down and $10 a month. Cancel anytime. Deal ends Friday, April 12th. See Home Club for details. At Fairway Meat Market, your family, and as part of the family, they want to save you money on your meat and groceries. Now, through April 7th, enjoy USDA Choice 8-ounce New York Strips for $6.99 each, Hickory Smoked Bacon for $4.99 per pound, Fresh Boneless Skinless Chicken Breast for $2.99 per pound, and Whole Tri-Tip for $9.99 per pound. That's all at Fairway Meat Market in the Rockledge Square Shopping Center, just south of 84th and Van Dorn. Gaina Trucking is hiring CDL Class A and B drivers. Gaina Trucking guarantees a 40-hour work week year-round. 
and their strong team culture makes it not a job, but a career. Gaina Trucking offers health, vision, and digital insurance, 401k with company match, an employee assistance program, and other bonus programs. Build a better career today with great team culture at Gaina Trucking. Learn more and apply today at GainaTrucking.com. Working at Continental in Lincoln isn't a job, it's a career. And right now, they've raised wages again, and they're hiring for production operators at $24.62 per hour, which grows to $28.97 per hour within three years. Skilled trade positions now start at $33.36 per hour, with opportunities to make more based on certifications. Continental also has salary jobs available and great benefits, plus medical and prescription costs at very low premiums. Dental, vision, and life insurance are offered at no premium cost to the associates, with increased bonuses and vacation for new hires. To learn more or apply, go to ContinentalJobs.com with keyword Lincoln. Come work at Continental today. Banking should feel personal, not intimidating. At Western National Bank, we're about real connections, founded by two ordinary guys with an extraordinary vision to know each and every customer personally. Fees, they suck. Avoid all fees with Western National Bank's Compass Checking Account. No monthly fees, no minimum balances, and get this, 5.12 APY on the first $1,000. Open your Compass checking account online in five minutes or less at mywnb.com. Experience the difference with Western National Bank. Visit mywnb.com. Member FDIC. Looking for a job that feels like family? Join Lincoln Industries, where tradition meets innovation. They're a family-owned, privately held manufacturing company with a passion for excellence and a commitment to their community. They have openings on all shifts at both the main plant and air park facilities, offering flexibility to fit your schedule. Whether you're a seasoned professional or just starting out, there's a place for you there. At Lincoln Industries, they invest in their people's success, providing opportunities for growth and advancement. Apply now and become a part of something special at Lincoln Industries. Welcome back into the happy hour, 93.7 The Ticket, theticketfm.com. Thanks again to Steve Mark of Inside Nebraska for joining us in that last segment. Good stuff on Husker Hoops as uh, Nebraska basketball still navigating the transfer portal stuff. Andrew Morgan, obviously. Uh, Frankie Fiddler, William Kyle. A couple other targets on Nebraska's radar. Um, certainly, we bring in Eric Strickland. Stricky, what's yeah. happening, man? What it do, what it do, another day. A bit a bit all of you listeners are due today. How are y'all? What's going I do. on? That's goodbye. Is that goodbye? That's goodbye. Oh, I, I thought it was like Bonjour what's up, is dude, hello. What's happening? You really gonna do him like this already? You see how he does? I know, I know. I mean, I, I'm gonna try to tell people you know, you're here hey, for the say, long haul. Said, no, what I said is what I said what it do, so I said I bid you adieu, but you're right. I, I'm uh, trying to help you you're out. You're helping your boy yeah, out. I, I heard I heard the game show yesterday. <laughs> Um, you saw perfectly you saw fair and balanced, I, right? I thought it was fair, man. Wow, I was I was a little disappointed, in Stricky. Wow, I'm gonna be honest, Stricky. That's now, now I will say I thought the questions for the contestant was a little easier. Facts, but you should have still gotten yours. I know I should have. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was right. not 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 a great performance, <laughs> not a stellar showing for uh, good old Stricky. Uh, um, Stricky, what's happening, man? Man, it's uh. Uh, it's been a great day, man. Uh, me and Cluster got out. And it's beautiful outside. Handled some things this morning uh, on another side of the business front. And been making some grounds, talking to That's some wonderful went golfing, by the way. Business. There no, we is. didn't. It's too cold out there. It's, <laughs> it's below my uh, golf what's your, temperature. What's your threshold? The, the 55. Oh, yeah. You got a ways to go. It's not 55? No. It was 40 this morning. It's no. 50 right now. It's yeah. windy. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And, so and, it's, and it's the wind, mostly. If it was 50 or 55 without the wind, yeah, I can bear it. It, it is kind of mm. crazy. It makes a difference. The mm. evolution, because uh, in 50s in April, we're like, man, it feels great out here. 50s in September, it's just like, okay, it's getting a little chilly here. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, all right. So I, I asked Austin this question, and I'll ask you the same one, Stricky. How, first of all, how excited do you get about the NFL draft year in and year out? Do you do you pay much attention to it? Like is NFL it, is draft? It, NFL. Is it something that you go home and you're like, ah, the NFL draft's on tonight. Let's watch it. Um, I think I'm probably more, my, my interest is peaked more in the first one to three rounds. Well, yes, of course. Yeah. I'm not sure if there's anybody that and sits there and is to, like, let's yeah. just watch the ticker on the bottom of the screen and just hear do, 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 do. Yeah. But I'm not like, like, you know, gung ho about yeah. it. You know what I mean? Like, I, you know, I'll kind of 
Just kind of keep check paying, the, yeah, keep tabs. Yeah, kind of tab in uh, the first 10, 15, okay, where they're going, yeah. what does that mean for them? You know, that type of Trades, thing. Trades, focus on, yeah. you know, hear about that. Uh, the reason I asked is because I was watching, uh, or I was reading mock drafts and things like that. And maybe this this draft will be more exciting or, or draw more eyeballs just because it's it's quarterback heavy, um, especially in the first round. They're yeah. they're projecting that five quarterbacks go in the top ten picks, um, and so I look at this and I, I think to myself, okay, let's let's think about some of these, right? You have Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniels, who's jumped out in front of Drake May in uh, according to a couple of mock drafts. Drake May comes in third. Then J.J. McCarthy comes in fifth. Then Milrow, where's he at? With that big oh, arm, man. Well, no, so then it's Michael Pinnix that comes oh. in at, at 10th, right? So it's it's really fascinating, not only because the projected trades, um, but now I look at, like, the Bills and the Bills who have now just traded Stephon Diggs for a second-round pick to the Houston Texans. Houston is is set up. Like we right, we talk about championship windows and, and bills. The bills have been a big conversation with regarding championship windows, uh, with Josh Allen and Stephon Diggs, and yeah, they that had, passed. They, they had some people on on the defense, you know, when they signed mm-hmm. them that they were they were pretty big names. Now it feels like that's kind of dwindling away, it's but you're passed. still left there with a franchise quarterback in Josh Allen, and it's only a matter of time until Josh Allen is frustrated and requests a trade out of there or gets dealt out of there. So now it's do the, do the Buffalo bills move up and try to get a wide receiver in the top 10, whether that's a Malik neighbors or a Marvin Harrison jr. Cause now guys, you look at their, you, uh, there was they a, got a there long was a way tweet. to go to move up. I, 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 I'm pretty sure I screen. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're 28, yeah. <laughs> but here are their, their top three wide receivers, Curtis Samuel, Khalil Shakir and Mac Collins. Well, they could yeah. probably they could probably land that in the middle of the first round. Well, they could land something in the middle of the first round. Middle, that's better that's than them. They, they pick they pick twenty eighth in the draft currently, but it's man. But do who, you want to do you have? It's eighty Mitchell, Brian Thomas Jr. Exactly guys like that. Uh, I'm not I'm not rolling. But, here's, here's my but question. But the one that I'm interested in. Like, Roma Dunze is is at the at the, at the you're top, not getting the, him. He's at the bottom of the top ten. You're not getting him. I don't think. Well, I'm saying you'd have to be in like the eight, yeah. nine, ten yeah, range to get him. But my my thing is this: the interesting thing for me is a Jake Sorensen move. Is potentially what do you do if Penix is still available at that position um, to land him? Are you all in on Tua, or would you go with I I or or with another lefty in Penix? I don't think Penix stays until the twenty first pick. You don't think? But I, I think, think there, so. I think there's a possible move they could make. I think there, they've got enough. Is he worth enough. trading up for? That's the thing. That's what I'm saying. He he's like, had a lot of wear. You, are you are you sold on? There's a lot of wear Tua? and tear on those knees for Penix. I, I'm not sold on Tua, but I'm also not sold on Penix. Like I love the guy. Loved his game in college, but he's not huge and already has injury history. So even if I'm a fan of his game, that's a Big gamble. Mm. I mean, bigger even than like Drew Brees and his shoulder would have been back in the day. Okay. It, it's interesting because like, and the reason I think I brought up, you know, this, this NFL draft, just because it is so quarterback heavy and, and that's such a, a popular, a fan position. Does it remind you of it, 2021 at all? Well, and that's what I was looking at is like 2023 that you had the two in the, in the, or excuse me, three in the top five with, uh, with Bryce Young, CJ Stroud and Anthony Richardson, 2022, your first quarterback was taken. 20th overall it took 20 picks and it was kenny pickett pickett yeah, yeah. And, and who, who's now searching for a job uh, mm-hmm. after after you know obviously being dealt uh, away to the the philadelphia eagles 2021 to your point there you had three straight to start but it wasn't it wasn't pretty and like, then justin fields down that list yeah, and then like, mac jones probably had the best rookie year of any of them yeah but it wasn't pretty like trevor lawrence is, is hasn't panned out as a number one yeah. pick zach wilson surely has not mm-hmm. trey lance is gone uh, like so that's where I wonder what the ratings for a draft like this will be because not only do you have a fan favorite position of quarterback heavily involved early on in the draft this year but also wide receiver a skill position that there's a lot of interesting wide receivers you have the Michigan guys who are going to be bottom of the first round like we mentioned the Romo Dunze Marvin Harrison Jr not only do you have the legacy of his father 
but it's also just him as as an athlete himself. And then not to mention, you know, guys like Malik Neighbors who might sneak into the top five. So I, I'll find it really interesting, the, the ratings for, for the NFL draft this year. I'm going to go back to the, the Josh Allen thing for a second. What's more likely, that Josh Allen requests a trade or that he Mike Trout's it? Mm. Man. I mm. Interesting. I mean, I, I think, are, uh, are, you able, uh, on, are you able to get to the Hall of Fame without a ring? Yeah, Marino did. It's, it's, Is he Marino? I don't think he's Marino. He, I don't think so. Okay, here, here, here's the ring. framing. Here's the framing. Is he the second best quarterback of his generation? This is clearly Mahomes' quarterback generation. Yes. Is Josh Allen the second best quarterback in the Mahomes era? Right now, yes. But does he stay ahead of C.J. Stroud? Does he stay ahead of Jalen Hurts? Herbert? Yep. Or Anthony Richardson? Well, and that's where like you could say the same thing about Justin Lamar. Herbert. Lamar. You could say the same thing about Justin Herbert. Is, is Justin Herbert going to stay in San Diego? Or is he going to want out? See, I see Herbert leaving before I see Josh Allen leaving. Interesting. I think it becomes a time to where you just realize that it, it, it's so tough to, to have the longevity these days mm -hmm. because of just the salary cap issues and the, the abilities to surround. It's like, hard. It's, it's an it's anomaly hard to, to be Mahomes. It's, 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 it's difficult to sustain a championship yeah. program yeah. or, or mm -hmm. organization in this yeah. case. Yeah, it is. It's, it's difficult to have that Mahomes type of flow and feel and so they've just been able to do it that, that's that's i think where you can distinguish greatness because i would ask then like let, let's it's talk not about that he's had the weapons that some of these other guys have had well and that's the thing is we're we're we're, we're not necessarily comparing the josh allen mahomes yeah. to quarterbacks but to that point of just you know describing greatness and and figuring it out the Chiefs can sign the Jarek McKinnons of the world on a cheap deal. Clyde Edwards Hilaire, who's been mm -hmm. not non-existent, but not very uh not very productive for the Chiefs, nearly not very productive mm -hmm. for them the last couple of years. He just re-signed with the Chiefs on a one-year deal. You're able to go out and get a rugby player. Like why? Because Patrick Mahomes can elevate their game. You don't need a wide receiver one. You don't you don't need a Stefan Dix. He showed it last year. Yeah. He mm -hmm. showed it that he just needs a Rasheed Rice, which is dealing with his own off the off the field Ooh, troubles now. Yeah, poor thing. So I like I sit here and I go, is Josh Allen able to do that? And and we're, I guess we're yeah. about to find out. Do you think this is something that's going to be placed on a on clauses of NFL players now? When you have the Henry Ruggs type situation, now you allegedly have yeah this situation going on now with Rasheed Rice. Um, you, do you think they're going to, do you think they may place a clause in there? Because I can tell you that there was a clause on motorcycles and stuff that we couldn't ride. Jay and Williams. This is why Jay Williams was very, yeah. Like the bulls were very, um, uh, what is it? What's the word I'm looking for? Very graceful mm -hmm. in basically giving him, the full of his contract they, because they could avoid it. Mm -hmm. um, we couldn't do things like skydive and, you know, yeah, but with now you're seeing just how the craziness of the, and, and, and I think it's probably the recklessness of it, right? Well, it's, it's becoming where player they, led. I mean, so that's well, what I'm saying is if you, if you, if you want to deter it, because think about the money that's, that's spent and lost because of the investment that you're making in first round picks and yeah. you know first second third round picks the investment that you're making in it and then because and look I'm not I'm not saying this is an alleged situation I'm not saying he was but I'm just mm -hmm. just just mm -hmm. just speak as if that's the situation what do you do if you're an organization I mean what recourse do you have yeah. by trying and hoping to keep that in check without because, you know, guys, sometimes we all get some form of Samson syndrome where we think we can just go into any situation and get out of them, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just kind of, it just kind of popped into my head. Is that something that you, yeah, that it's, you can it's foresee? What does the organization risk their image, not to save money, but to still honor contracts and try to get the use out of the player on the field, risking their image? My question would be, is it easier to incentivize players to do something or to incentivize players not to do something? 
Because I think if you say, don't do this, don't do this, don't do that. That's like having a kid. You're, you're a father now. It, it's hard to do, <laughs> yeah. right? Tell, tell her, don't touch the stove, baby. Oh, oops. I'm going to touch the stove. <laughs> yeah. I told right. you not to, right? And, and yeah. yes, it still reflects on them. But I think if you're going to do that, you would have to find ways to get creative in saying, if you do X number of hours of community service, you get a bonus. You know, give them those opportunities instead of telling them not to take some other opportunity, something like that. That's pretty good. And, and well, well, in in the same light, then now that now what you know about, like for example, say Draymond Green. Yeah. When his contract is over, is that something that you clause up on him? Is that something that you would have clawed up mm -hmm. on a Dennis Rodman or claw? I'm I'm just only yeah. I'm only speaking because now as I look at NIL deals, guys, and as I look at just situations now, I think me and Austin kind of got into the topic of, of of something about NIL and and how you can recruit. Because just think about the investment that you're making. And then a young man comes in. So just recently, somebody came in. Your boy from uh, your boy. My from, boy. Uh, where was he from? Uh, the lineman. He came in. Then he went. What did he do? He went to Texas. The, the big the big tackle. The big well, the, the like Michael, offensive lineman, Michael Mazuka. He hit for the, he hit for the hundred. He hit for the hundred. Oh, Kane Proctor. Proc Proctor. Oh, Kane Proctor. Yeah, yeah, my yeah. boy. Yeah, that's my boy. <laughs> he hit for the one thousand, and then both. I mean, yeah. They, they, well, the and part of that is though that you have no, you have no union. Like, there's no player. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, there's so no. I'm saying, how can you know? We we've given a lot of deference, and we've given a lot of yeah. uh, empowerment to the players in in a lot of these sports, and at some point, it's going to either shift or the mm -hmm. course correction is going to be crazy going the other way. And and so I, I, I think you want to mitigate that in, well, in between. And speaking specifically with NIL right now, you got that injunction going on where there's no investigations open, whether that's against universities and collectives or whether that's against players. So the whole Caden Proctor situation, it's it's I mean, it's because they don't have any not I don't want to say union. It, they have no players association. There's nothing. Uh, legally to where they can be held up of saying, all right, um, I'm, yeah. I'm I'm trying to think of... There's no board. There's yeah, there's, no, there's nothing that can be that the, the NCAA no or governance. the, Iowa, the yeah. Iowa collective can go and say, well, hold up now. That's not what we agreed on with like the Players Union or the Players Association. Yeah. That's not what we agreed on, right? Where they have it in professional leagues and professional organizations and, and things like that. So, um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of work to do. But, uh, you know, now with the injunction in the NCAA, obviously... I think also uh, agents play a big part in this. We see it in Major League Baseball mm -hmm. where Scott Boris was like, we're holding out until teams want to pay up. And so then you're essentially strong arming an organization, which makes the decision if it gets to a point of Henry Ruggs or if it gets to a point of Rasheed Rice, they have to make a really important decision on whether or not they want to try to hold out, take a risk on that Rasheed Rice or, or X player is not involved. Mm -hmm. But if they are, then they waited longer. They can't sign a new guy as soon. They're out on a lot of money of guaranteed, I would I would assume. And then also your image is hurt a little bit because you still hitched your wagon to him after you knew something was happening. Yeah, it's it's a it's a it's a very fine line, a fine to, line. to walk. Mm -hmm. My last thing, and I'm going to throw out to both of you and, and then I'm I'm done until we get on the block. Um, How long before football separates from NCAA governance? Just 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 your. Postseason already is. Top. Yeah, postseason already is. I think also you had a little bit of uh, uh, of ground kind of started to be tread on or, you know, walked on when when ACC, what was it, a SEC, Big Ten, and Big 12 announced their little partnership with yeah. the commissioners yeah. where it was mm -hmm. like, hey, we're going to just kind of be a, a group of like advisors and we're going to talk to each other and have conversations about how we can make college football and, and collegiate athletics great. I can't remember these the specific wor you know wordage and verbiage of it, um, but it was basically like Greg Sankey and Tony Petiti and Brent Yormack, Yormack, where it was like, we're gonna just kind of be here, and guess what? If slash when that time comes, they didn't say this, and it wasn't necessarily the NCAA's funeral, but it was like, hey, if something happens down the road, we're gonna be in a position to quickly swift swoop in. And we're going to be having a leadership team already in place. I think we need to, at some point, have a discussion about Jim Phillips and yeah. everything going on in the ACC, because those three you mentioned were all conferences that have added 
in the last five years. You're right. The ACC, I mean, right now is dealing with the whole Clemson, Florida State suing them, you know, media rights deal. And I don't know if that's Jim Phillips' fault. He kind of walked into that situation mm -hmm. as it was developing. I don't think Jim Phillips has done a bad job as ACC commissioner. But when you see the landscape of college athletics, I think it would be easy to look at him and say, yeah, he's part of the reason the ACC is falling behind. Why isn't the ACC adding? You know, I, get the, I guess they did with Cal, Stanford, and SMU. But that's not the same level not in addition that everyone else did. So I, I would be right. I would be shocked if ACC athletics fans are thrilled with the job Jim Phillips is doing. But I feel like he was playing catch up from the day he walked into that job. Well, and I, I think when you look at Jim Phillips, it, it's more surprising when you mentioned the caliber of of people that they have uh, or excuse me, or uh, programs that they've uh, added. They haven't even been in the running no. for some of the big ones. They mm -hmm. haven't even mm -hmm. taken swings. It's <laughs> almost like little brother understanding. All right, this is my place, and these are these are the top echelon type of programs. That this is the this is the top or the ceiling that I'm going to be able to get as mm -hmm. as commissioner of the ACC. Maybe that's on the ACC for hiring Jim Phillips, who seemed like an okay hire at the time out of Northwestern, former Northwestern athletic director. But then that makes it even more confusing because there is that Big Ten background. There is mm -hmm. that big conference um, type of feel that you had and yet you don't seem very aggressive in it. And so it's been interesting. They had that Alliance last year. That was, I mean, basically nothing came of that. Um, but now it's, it really feels like for the big 10 sec and big 12 sake, like the big 12 seems like one that, okay, you could have taken them out, moved in the ACC and it maybe would have made more sense. But give credit to Brent Yormark, Yormack, right? Where it's like, here he is. He's made the Big 12 a real player. Whether that was adding Utah, whether that was adding BYU, whether that was Arizona or Arizona State now, like that Big 12 now is spans geographically. Like, yes, the ACC does with Cal and Stanford, but now the Big 12 is from Florida all the way up to the Northwest almost with Utah and BYU. And you have one of the coolest rivalries in, in college football with the, the Civil War going on between BYU and, and Utah each year. And then you have Texas. And then you have other places around that area. So now we talk about geographically, the Big, Tw Big Ten's expanded. The SEC is perfectly fine where they are. But now the Big 12's kind of come out and expanded geographically as mm -hmm. well. Uh, give credit to their commissioner. I think. Um, yeah, right. it seems like the ACC just didn't want to. It, it just they, didn't they, they weren't move. aggressive. They're, they're stuck to the coast. They weren't aggressive, yeah. and and it feels like they had an opportunity, right? Especially in a year where you've had a couple of years of dominance from Clemson. Maybe that's on the downturn, but this was Florida State. Like Florida State was having a good season. You had Duke was having a good season, and you 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 failed to do anything with it. You failed to use that as leverage for some of the smaller schools as well. Um, going forward. All right, guys, what's coming up on the block today? Um, I was kind of tuned out of that last conversation because Dennis Dodd just dropped a piece. He sat mm. down with Scott Frost Hello. in Scottsdale. So I'm thinking what we'll do is we'll we'll take some time to read that article and we'll, we'll talk about that in hour two of the show. Um, Nebraska football did put out its uh, Nebraska Spring League rosters that I think would be interesting to go over. Uh, we always have the Stefan Diggs news. We'll go three on three. We meant to do this a few weeks ago. Um, but Trev Alberts left and then Troy Dannon was hired. We haven't had a chance to do it yet. Um, so that'll be fun. And then Evan Bland talking all things Husker baseball, maybe some football spring and uh, basketball transfer portal at 3.30. Man, that's going to be interesting. Stick, Stay tuned. It's headlined. I'll just tease it. I'll, if that's okay with you guys. Headlined, Scott Frost, quote, dying for a chance to coach after growing older, wiser from disappointing Nebraska tenure. There it is. All right, that's we'll all coming in. up. Oh. Uh, that's coming up on the block with uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> on the block with Strick and Austin. Um, so stick to, stay tuned for that one. Good stuff there. Thanks to Austin for hanging out. Thanks again to Steve Mark for joining the show as well. We'll step aside on the block with Strick and Austin coming up next. Plains Cover Crop is your one-stop seed shop. Call us now for spring and summer forages, CRP mixes, and 